It is Saturday, November the 5th, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. We're starting at the 24th verse of the first chapter today. Colossians continues to unfold Paul's thanksgiving for the people, and it continues to unfold what he knows about Jesus. So now listen as I read the next several verses. Paul says, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. Now pause the video. Read the text again. Read it as your own thoughts and reflections come to mind. Jot them down, remember them. And then when you're finished, resume the video and I'll share my reflections. The first thing that catches me in this text is the dissonance of that opening statement, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings. How do we rejoice in suffering? Paul says it over and over in all of his letters. There is joy in suffering. Paul's not the only one in Scripture to speak the same words of truth. Perhaps that's the challenge here, is to begin to ponder how suffering leads to joy. I notice that he continues, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Paul is suffering not for his own. He's not just suffering and having a little pity party. He's suffering for the sake of the Colossians. And he's suffering in his own flesh. I notice in that verse also, that he says, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Can Christ's afflictions lack anything? I'm kind of, I'm kind of brought to a pause in that. What is, what is Paul saying? I do understand that Paul's afflictions, as he sits in jail and waits for whether he's going to be put to death or set free, might certainly be a different kind of thing than Jesus suffered, and maybe that's what he's getting at. That Christ suffers in a particular way, and he knows suffering at a depth that none of us can know, but that the suffering that we do as the followers of Jesus is also suffering that is gathered up into Christ. As Paul suffers in a new way, in a unique way, then Christ gathers that suffering up. What about all of the suffering that Jesus didn't experience? What of the person who suffers through cancer with faith, with dignity, with compassion? Is Paul saying that Christ gathers that up? Maybe. Christ's afflictions and all of the afflictions of the church, it seems to be saying, Paul says is for the sake of his body, the church, so that the church might know the depth of human suffering. I wonder if that means that coming to church to get away from suffering is not the right plan. I notice also that Paul says, I became its servant according to God's commission. God called Paul to do this. He called 
to make God's word fully known to everyone that he encountered. And then he refers again to this mystery that's been hidden throughout the ages that came from Christ in the beginning. We are part of something much larger, it seems, in Paul's view. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory. Paul often tells us that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. He's the one who's been sent to take the message of Jesus Christ beyond the people of Judea, beyond the Jewish people and the people of Israel, to the people of the whole world, to the people who haven't heard of him yet. And that is a mission that you and I are engaged in, most certainly. One of the phrases that caught me up and made me ponder for a couple of minutes is that this mystery he's talking about, well, look what he says in the 27th verse. This mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul is daring to say that this mystery, this hope in Christ, this peace, this grace, this calling, everything that he has resides in you, in you. How does that look? What does that sound like? What does it call us to do? Paul then reminds us, it is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ, to bring people along, to raise people in the faith. People don't sometimes want to be mature in Christ, I've learned. I don't want to be mature in Christ sometimes. I'd rather sit in my ignorance and not know how Christ wants me to grow up into the fullness of the perfection God intends. Paul then ends with this verse, For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires, inspires within me. The energy that Paul has to do this, and his energy was considerable, all comes from God. <laughs> when I'm feeling a lack of energy, is it because I'm not looking in the right place for it? The mystery is planted in us. It's alive in us. Maybe that's where the power comes from. That's my reflections to share with you. Now compare them with your own and then formulate your prayer. Utter to God the words that come to you based on this text. The questions, the comfort, the challenge, the concerns. And then when you've spoken to God, sit in silence and listen for him to speak. Amen.